A good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, uh, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, whatever place it is you're tuned on to the Life uh, Signatures uh, Radio. Karibu sana, that's Swahili for you are so much welcome. On to the episode today, we will continue talking about what we've been talking about, but first of all, this is a daily show, it's a daily podcast on the subject of purpose, productivity, and resilience. Uh, there is no single day over the past several years that we've been doing this, that we've missed to have an, an episode out there. Today we are going to continue talking about what we did start talking about a couple of days back. In fact, we've been talking in general about raising spirit-led children. We've been looking at five ways, actually six ways now, in which you can know you are not raising a spirit-led child. And remember, the caveat here is that this is not a religious series. Spirit is to human as blood is to flesh. We are all spirit. Whether you believe in religion or not, whether you believe in God or not, you are spirit. You cannot deny that. Let us go deeper into this episode today. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. good recap will help us here so that you can know where we've come from and where we're going. But just to do a recap is to tell you actually that if you've not listened, if you've not followed up or the previous episodes, you've got to do it so that you can get the gist of what we're talking about because a recap is just a summary. In fact, it's a summary of a summary. Actually, a recap is a summary of the executive summary. And so it doesn't give you quite a bit of what you need to learn if you have not been following. We've been doing this for over 25 episodes. So if this is a subject matter that you are interested in, whether you're a parent or you're a teacher, and you just want to learn how to raise a spirit-led child or what it means to raise a spirit-led child, then 25 episodes back, go back and start from there. Episode number 18, 24, I believe. And start from there and start building up. Number one, you know you're not raising a spirit-led child if you do not teach them to cherish the inner compass, their inner compass. Number two, you know you're not raising a spirit-led child if you do not teach them the importance of self-extraction. Number three, you know you're not raising a spirit-led child if you do not nurture and nourish their creative capacities. And number four, you know you're not raising a spirit-led child if you do not teach them the value, the importance of personal development and personal growth. Number five, you know you're not raising a spirit-led child if you're not teaching them to be humane. And we started talking about this uh, number six. You know you're not raising a spirit-led child if you do not speak into their spirits. Now, this is interesting because we've already given you a background in the past two episodes about speaking into the spirit. And we've said that people do this a lot because it works both ways. When someone keeps telling you you're stupid, you're stupid, there's a story of a child and she was growing up and she was a firstborn and she used to ace her classes in primary one, primary two, before the other, uh, you know, her siblings were born and so on. And so the parents to this beautiful child 
kept comparing when these kids, when these siblings came, they started comparing this firstborn to the others in terms of their performance, alluding to the fact that this child was stupid. And so they would just, you know, keep haranguing this child and telling her how stupid she was. In their, in their mentality, they thought that this feedback will basically motivate them motivate the child to prove them wrong but it worked hook line and sinker in that the child believed exactly what the parents were telling this child to such an extent and i've shared this story very many times in these episodes to such an extent that if you ask this child one plus one what is one plus one they will not tell you not because they do not know or maybe they do know but they're now so much confused so much so that they think whatever they're going to say is going to be laughed at or it's going to be you know declared wrong they started believing what it was being spoken and it became self-fulfilling prophecy all the other siblings they passed her overtook her in school she kept repeating and repeating and repeating don't you think that words are idle both positive and negative they are potent we said in the episodes that have passed two episodes that have passed that there is nothing that has been created positive or negative without words words are seeds words are the germinating factor of anything tangible you see and when you're talking about raising spirit-led children you've got to learn to speak into their spirits how are you gonna do that someone might be asking so first of all go back to episodes if you've not listened to this go back to episodes and start from there and you'll get the gist of the matter but the the first thing that i want to talk about just today how exactly are you going to speak into their spirits the very first thing i'm going to tell you this is very powerful today and let me just before i can tell you that let me tell you this i was working in a particular place and they were building business cards uh, no sorry not business cards birthday cards virtual birthday cards electronic va- birthday cards to celebrate people in the month and so I, I i told someone i gave someone an instruction i told them when you're building these cards they asked me how am i going to do them i just told them you look at this guy look at the face of this person and imagine the best and speak that which you imagine about them it can be a short phrase and so on in, in essence i just told them to prophesy prophesy about them that's it that th- those are words and they are coming from the spirit so i'm telling you to tell you this that the very first thing you can be able to do in order to speak into the spirit of someone most specifically your child is naming naming what name are you giving your kids don't be like the African-Americans whose naming conventions are just uh, interesting. They don't give names based on meaning. They give names based on, for lack of a better word, sexiness. Shaquila. You know, it sounds Lakisha. You know, what does it mean? At the end of the day, what does it mean? In, in, the, in the Oriental society in the middle east and in many other african societies the name carried a meaning it wasn't useless and for the most part the name of the person normally lived to exude aspects if not the full aspects of what the name meant so when you are talking about naming it's absolutely critical now don't confuse this with the so-called christian names there are no christian names you understand what i'm saying there are no christian names the so-called christian names are english names lawrence is not a christian name some of you you are baptized and you're told that you're now called thomas and thomas is a christian it's not a christian name it's just a name it's a it's actually it's an english name the names that we're giving whatever name it is that we're giving to someone has got to carry meaning that's one thing it's got to carry meaning and that meaning is basically 
hooved in the spirit it's hewn in the spirit at times it is laughable how many names are generated it's laughable how people people actually go to a book or a dictionary and, and so on and they start looking for names for kids how sad we have websites that help you to get cute names how sad these things are spiritual now let me tell you a story i've told you this story very many times in these episodes when i was growing up in primary school our head teacher well-meaning actually one of the biggest a legend well-meaning there was a lot of theft going on and you know just this petty pickpocketing and stealing of pens and books and so on in school and in a bid to curb that vice you know what he did he devised a very bizarre punishment in that if you were caught having stolen someone's pen for example you would be made to wear an apron that had been printed on it three names one name actually with three translations the first was mwizi that is swahili for thief the second is omwifi that is luhia for thief and the last one was thief that is english for thief you would wear that thing the whole week in school i remember a character was caught and he wore that apron and he went around and so on and so forth what do you think was happening to this naming to this labeling what do you think was happening to this guy i don't know what was happening but i can tell you a couple of years later on the community in which my primary school was started having robbers at night terrorizing people big time guess who was the ringleader the guy who wore that apron i still remember this is years decades back but i still remember that it's that powerful you cannot approach naming casually because if you're raising a spirit led person their name has got to mean something the rationale behind the naming these days is just it's nothing connected to the spirit it's all about how cute a name is going to be like naming used to be a massive ritual in some societies it still is in some societies it's a highly spiritual thing highly regarded spiritual thing and today increasingly names are just being slapped on babies just for the, for the sake of it names do speak in naming a child one has to realize that you are in some way speaking you are prophesying you are imputing upon matters spiritual whether positive or negative upon that personality and before anyone is born by the way if you know you are expecting you've got to start the naming we were used to to be told that you need to put your hands on your wife's belly and you you speak words you prophesy you pray or something like that that's spiritual and don't think it's it's weird and stupid it's powerful because it does deliver it works how about naming your child Eugene Bolt? And he runs like a bolt and he breaks records. These things are spiritual. My goodness. Anyway, it is important for you to learn. If someone asked you what does the name of your child mean? You should have an answer. It should have meaning. If there is no meaning, please rename them get another name it's not i mean it's not cast in stone names are not cast in stone they ain't paul became i mean saul became paul names are not cast in stone the spirit of wisdom is that we should be imparting the life of the spirit into these people by the names we give them so if you call someone wisdom for example and i love some cultures in uganda where they have these very nice names and even in in nigeria someone is called fortunate someone is called um, hopeful someone is called actually someone is called beautiful these are powerful names but we need to go past the surface of these things like like fortunate and all that stuff and put words of meaning and words of impact names of meaning and names of impact on someone so names are not empty 
my friends. The first way that you're going to speak into a spirit in the spirit of a child is to give them an appropriate, meaningful, deep name. Tomorrow we're going to continue talking about this. How do you speak into the spirit of a child? Until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.